Happy Tuesday. Welcome into CBS Sports HQ presented by Geico. We got a full house in here today with Pete Prisco, Brady Quinn, Chris Hassel. I'm Grace Remington. We're getting you ready for the NFL draft and the countdown is almost complete two mm -hmm. days away. Down to two. Pete Prisco doesn't do a mock draft for 11 months out of the year. <laughs> but man, you get to April and it's you just overload the market with these things. I do you what the new people want. They crave this. This is the one. <laughs> where, where does this one rank? The what teams should do mock draft. Where is that rank for you? In terms of my? Yeah. Number one. That's your favorite one to oh, do? yeah. Because you know, trying to predict where guys are going to go, even when you talk to people in the league and they all lie to you, is tough to do. So I try and do one what I would do if I was a general manager. If you were the general manager. And I wouldn't be lying to anybody. i just tell them like it is. I'll give you a lot of credit for doing this exercise because you're right. You're not trying to be right. You're saying I am right and you are <laughs> wrong to many of the general managers, coaches, and owners out there. So kudos to you for doing this because I don't know anyone else who actually does their mock draft this way. And you, we already see there's a big change at the top. This is unlike any other mock that's out there. Pete Prisco thinks the Chicago Bears should draft Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. Pete, I, I know you've said many times that he's the most improved player you've ever seen from his days at Arizona State, then to LSU winning the Heisman Trophy. Is, is that alone the reason you think the Bears should draft him number one? No, it's not alone. I mean, the ability to move and get out of the pocket, and I know Caleb Williams moves a little bit as well, but this kid is special the way he gets outside the pocket. I, I think he's got the ability to become a Lamar Jackson-like runner in the NFL. It's not as electric probably side to side, but he can go as fast as Lamar Jackson. And and that will help him develop uh, as a quarterback. I, you know, it's going to take a little time. He's a better passer, I think, coming out than Lamar Jackson was. But I think it's going to take a little time. So you have that ability to get outside. I prefer him barely over Caleb Williams. I, I like Caleb Williams. I just think Caleb Williams, there's some flaws in there. And here's the other thing, and you know me. In talking to these guys and watching their interviews and stuff, I think this kid has a little bit more fire in the belly. I <laughs> think there's a little more fire in the belly. And you well, know you just like him because you haven't seen him cry after a game yet, right? Well, that, that's, a, that's a demerit for the other guy, but I, will t <laughs> I do like Jaden Daniels, and, and he is the most improved player I've ever seen. It's shocking, too, he likes him because he left his alma mater, yeah, the right. Arizona State Sun Devils. I should hold that against him. For greener mm -hmm. pastures, but you don't hold it against him. Look, you keep comparing him to Lamar Jackson. There's only one Lamar Jackson. Let's just be very clear about that. Not only as a draft prospect coming out, Jaden Daniels is not as dynamic as, as he was. Uh, I think he had a great final season, the best final season of any of these quarterbacks. And to your point, he's progressed a ton. But you always say this about quarterback play at the NFL level. Where do you got to play from at the NFL level? The pocket. The pocket. And that's where I can become a little bit concerned with what it will look like at the next level where the RPO game, like you're seeing somewhat at LSU, not as big at the NFL level. All those run, runs downfield, oftentimes they can be special, but they can also lead to injury. So he's progressed a ton. I think he's the second best quarterback in this draft class. I would still take Caleb Williams. And I think one of the reasons that Pete doesn't like Caleb Williams and what he sees is he thinks he holds on to the ball too long. Well, when you come back as a reigning Heisman Trophy winner, one of the things that you see teams do all the time is they play a lot of drop A coverage. So he had all day to throw where he's waiting for guys to get open. So I know at times you feel like he holds on to the ball too long. When I go back and watch the tape, I'm like, no, that's exactly what you should do. And he's got to buy time. He's got to create. I still think Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this draft class. I think he's the guy for Chicago. I don't fault you for saying this because Jaden Daniels had a much better final season than I think Caleb Williams did. But at the end of the day, I've got this one switched around. Let's be real, though. We're probably going to see five quarterbacks go in the first 12, 15 picks. Of those five, one will be a star, one will be okay, one will be a backup, and two will be bust. That's the odd. The odd well, say if, that's if, the if, case. If, if you're the looking, say if that's you're the looking case. at recent history in 2021, yeah. Yeah. You, already, you already have four of those quarterbacks who are traded. They're not even with the, the team that drafted them in that span of time. Only Trevor Lawrence is still with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ironically enough, Mac Jones is now a backup on that roster with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll see how this plans out. What's most important is where these guys get drafted. The good thing for Caleb is the Bears are in a much better spot than when Justin Fields got drafted there. So I think he's got a much better chance of succeeding and being and seeing that second contract. And, and I would say the same thing about the Washington Commanders. 
whether it is Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels, a much better position to be in. They've got talent on the outside. Their offensive line needs some work, but they've got new ownership too, and they got a head coach in Dan Quinn I believe in. And if this works out, to your point, if Caleb Williams did go number two in this case, he's going to be relinked with an offense that he knows or at least has familiarity with because of Cliff Kingsbury, who's now their OC that was with Southern Cal. So a lot of those things would align. It's not happening, by the way. If, it's it, not happening. Okay. I'm just saying that's how I would do it. Well, either way, if it did happen, I think both these guys would be in a, a good spot or much better spot than I think where these franchises have been in, in previous years. Mm -hmm. I love how the consensus is the draft starts at number two and here's Pete just starting the drama off the top. <laughs> All right, so you got Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, then Drake May, number three to the Patriots. So why do you have him going there instead of the other quarterbacks in that three, four, five? Area. See, in my mind, I think Drake May is a clear number three. Uh, I think he's ahead of the other two. Uh, I think the Patriots have been linked to J.J. McCarthy. I hear more and more that they like J.J. McCarthy. There's a split in the building, Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. I prefer Drake May. And, and to me, he's going to might take a little time. So you can play a guy for a little bit, then put him in there. He has some mechanical flaws, as you know. You've seen him. Uh, I think his season before was much better than what we saw last year. He didn't have a lot of players around him. He was pressured a ton, much like Caleb Williams, by the way, and I think he put a lot of pressure on himself. He didn't play as well, but I think he's the best of the, of the five remaining quarterbacks, or three remaining quarterbacks. I think when you look at the, the rest of the field of quarterbacks, he's got the next most upside as far as his combination of toughness, athleticism, playmaking ability, he's ambidextrous and throw with both, both hands. We've seen that before, too. Uh, and if he ends up in a place like the Patriots, I think this is a roster that's improved somewhat, still more question marks about the direction of this team moving forward but you know to me I think he's the guy that I would be willing to kind of push my hat in and say I feel like he can be a solid franchise starter in the future so if, if this is how your mock draft works out he'd be the third quarterback taken and honestly if we're talking about tape I would say Michael Penix probably next to Jaden Daniels had the second best tape this year now everyone said there's always medical concerns about where he's going to be but when you really compare the guy who to me looks most similar to what CJ Stroud did in his last year at Ohio State and what he did at Houston it'd be Michael Penix up next not even JJ McCarthy based on the tape yeah well I have I have May going and then I do have Penix going ahead of JJ McCarthy I, I you know I'm not a JJ McCarthy guy I do have him going in this first round because I think quarterback star of teams should try and address that position as quickly and as often as you can to try and fix it. But uh, Penix would be right after right after Drake May for me. I think the tough thing for Drake May with the Patriots roster is he'd be falling into the same issue he had during his time in North Carolina. It's not as good of a roster as far as the weapons you've got to throw to in comparison to the first two teams drafting. All right, PC, you have quarterbacks one, two, three, then a couple of wide receivers. You have neighbors going four. You have the Chargers taking a wide receiver at five with Marvin Harrison still there. Did you consider a trade there, or is this a draft that you're just going no trade? No, because I'd be trading with myself. And I don't want to get, you have to do that, right? Basically, I'm the GM for You're every the GM team. GM of every team, yeah. Look, we already find you confusing. I can only imagine how your mind <laughs> would handle that. Uh, I, no, this is a tough one for me. I think it's you know, splitting hairs with these two receivers. I think they're both going to be great players. I really do. But I like the guy who has a little more wiggle. I said that on your radio show. That I think they have a little more wiggle in neighbors than you do in Harrison. So I, I prefer to take neighbors. But you have the Chargers taking Marvin Harrison Jr. and not trading it. You think that's possible? I do. I do. I think they also could go offensive line there as well. But I think when you look at their wide receiver position, you have a gunslinger quarterback who needs help. I mean, you look at their weapons. They need help in the worst way. Uh, I think you have to address that. And if he's what everybody thinks he is, and I do think he's a great player, then you have to address that and get him for him. Again, I still think Marvin Harrison Jr. will be the first wide receiver taken. I'd be shocked. And in this, to your point, if Arizona did take Malik Neighbors at four, I think the Chargers would probably stay put and take Harrison in this spot, or another team might even trade up, like the New York Giants, with the Chargers, just to be able to get you know that sort of talent at wide receiver. Now, as far as you know how you're going to utilize them, you know Marvin Harrison to me is more of that split in that X, that wide receiver you're trying to isolate, and, and you're going to be working downfield, you're going to be working on, on those one-on-one -on -one routes, and really trying to scheme him open. With Malik Neighbors, you can do a lot with him. You talk about wiggle, to me it's the wide receiver screen game, it's everything that's underneath that I think he can be special. And so I can understand your point of how you can utilize it's him close. at the next level. Uh, and they are close, but I, I still think Marvin Harrison Jr. is the number one wide receiver in this class. Okay, so this is where your run on the receivers begins because you have neighbors, then Harrison, now Rome Odunze to the Giants. Instead of the Giants taking a quarterback, you know, that's obviously a situation they got to explore. Uh, or maybe a running back or, or a corner. I mean, why Odunze? 
Well, I think they need to get a I think they're going to pass on the quarterback. Although in this scenario, they might take J.J. McCarthy. But uh, I think they pass on the quarterback, and, and they have to get weapons outside. I mean, you, you talk about a team that hasn't had a big – who's the last big-time threat they had at a wide receiver? Odell Beckham, and he only had him for a couple years. So I, I think they have to address the wide receiver position. I think Adunze would be a guy who can step in. Great kid, works hard, would be perfect for that offense, step in there and become the number one guy. This really becomes a question, though, of how they feel about Daniel Jones. You know, if Daniel Jones, who I think will be – ready by the time they get the training camp and they feel like they can get through this year with Daniel Jones and Drew Locke who maybe if Jones can't or, or, or fizzles out it'll be Drew Locke in there and they give him a shot at this but it really comes down to me to how you feel about in this position JJ McCarthy or Michael Penix who's still on the board and the drop off between that and then also look at the wide receiver position you know maybe you feel like there's a bigger drop off between Romo Dunze and the next wide receiver you could take in the second round, as opposed to you know getting a quarterback in the second round, uh, whether it's a Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler, whoever you want to throw into that conversation. But that's what I think is up for debate. Um, there's no doubt it's a need for them, but I still think you're going to be looking at it saying we still need a quarterback when it's all said and done that we feel like will give us a chance to go win football games. A lot of mocks have Dunze going to the Bears with their second top 10 pick at number nine, but with those three wide receivers off the board, Pete, you have the Bears going in a different direction with Chop Robinson, is that because there's too much of a drop-off between wide receiver three and four? Yes, in my mind there is, but more than that, I think they have to find another edge rusher to go with Sweat. I mean, when you look at them, you look at their defense, they were really good in the last six, seven weeks of the season, but now you need another edge rusher. And to me, this kid has the most upside of any of the pass rushers in this class. I, I think when you look at him, he's, he wasn't that productive in terms of the sack numbers, but you put the Michigan tape on, they ran at him a lot, but he was also disruptive getting after the quarterback a little bit. I, I think he's one of those guys that's going to be if he's coached right he's got the tools to become a really dynamic edge player. You gotta be careful about putting on one game and looking at it because that was a Michigan offensive line that was banged up and, and to your point yes he had a great game he got after it to the point where they didn't feel like they could pass the football protect JJ McCarthy and they really ran the football the majority of the second half of that game and they ran at Chop Robinson which is more of my concern a little bit undersized as far as playing that edge position he probably fits a 3-4 scheme a little bit better as an outside linebacker that on those sub personnel is going to play as, as a DN to be able to rush the passer no doubt about it he's talented you talked about the bend the way he's able to dip and get around the edge and really his burst his first step it's one of the best in this draft class this is as high as I've seen him taken in a mock draft so kudos to you if you get this one right yeah I'm, I'm big on him I think he's gonna be a star in this league okay so JJ McCarthy is kind of your bottom of the first round tier of quarterbacks you have him going to the Broncos who just traded for Zach Wilson yesterday but you're you're sticking put with them drafting a the quarterback here yeah and they said they were gonna get a veteran quarterback and add a rookie quarterback so that that is something they're gonna continue you to do Zach Wilson counts as the veteran <laughs> well yeah I mean I guess Yes, he does. But uh, <laughs> I, look, J.J. McCarthy to me is a little overvalued in this draft, and I have Michael Penix going to pick before him to the Vikings. Uh, but J.J. McCarthy to the Broncos would make a lot of sense here. I, 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 although, you know, personally, I'm not a big J.J. McCarthy guy. I'd wonder how he would work with, with Sean Payton. Uh, I know it would fit the offense. He would fit that scheme. But again, I, I just think that they have to address the quarterback position. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, I don't think Zach Wilson factors into this at all. You know, I think if J.J. McCarthy is there they take him obviously if Michael Penix is there right let's just say they're both on the board they might even go that route and take Michael Penix before they take JJ McCarthy so either way they've got to address the quarterback position I think you have to with that first round pick depending on which quarterback is still there yeah and they, we hear they like Bo Nix a little bit too but you can't take Bo Nix there and they don't have a second round pick so if you wait you're not mm -hmm. probably not going to get Bo Nix right. unless you trade back up into the yeah. second round let's move on to the Philadelphia Eagles Lane Johnson's still there but you have them drafting potentially his replacement here in J.C. Latham out of Alabama. Yeah, and there's talk now that Latham could actually end up going a lot higher than this. And and I love J.C. Latham. He's a big physical man. And, you know, some people say he's not always the you know the best in terms of the production. He doesn't play as hard as he should. But uh, man, he's a mountain of a man. These offensive linemen are all giant guys. When you look at the Eagles, they draft and replace. You pull one off the jar. You, you know, pull one off the shelf. A jar off the shelf. Rears your replacement. That's what you do. And that's what you, I think, you know, Lane Johnson's hinted at retirement. You have to be good on the offensive line. They're, we saw how good they are when their offensive line is great. I think they have you to. You shoving him out already? You shoving Johnson out? No, or one he... more year maybe. Okay. Yeah, I think he's talked about it. He's talked about walking away. He is, what, 33, 34, someone in that ballpark. So maybe there's some thought or consideration that teams go through and they say, we have to prepare for this, this player moving on. 
I don't know that J.C. Latham, to your point, lasts to this point in the draft. Probably not. Now, he's primarily a right tackle. You know, you seem to think that you can take all these tackles and put them down inside for a year at guard, and they're going to play at the next level. It's a much greater undertaking. Like Jonathan, I think Jonathan most, Ogden did back in the yeah, day. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Jonathan Ogden is like a, a one-in-a-lifetime type <laughs> offensive lineman. But so he just played guard for a year, then he moved to tackle, became a Hall of Famer. Pete, okay. did you ever slide out to tackle one no, your high school no, team? No, no. <laughs> Case in point, right? He no. thinks you can take the guys on the outside, put them no. in, take the, you know, just move them all around. It's, it's not really how it works. And it's hard moving from one, one side to the other. You know, if you draft J.C. Latham, who played at right tackle, and you want him to go play left, his punch is different, his footwork's going to be different. If it's a bigger undertaking, not only trying to get down an NFL offense on top of that. So uh, I think he goes earlier in the draft at this point. I think, honestly, for what you said, the right tackle spot could be a need for the Giants. If you want to look at how high he could go, I think he goes as high as six in this and draft. Evan Neal was hurt the last two years. You got to, you drafted him high in the first round. You got to let him. I play understand. Out. By the way, the two be, arguably the two best guards in the league are what Zach Martin and, and Quentin Nelson. Sure. I mean, I don't think Nelson has played as well. But would they play in college? Uh, they played at Notre Dame. Would they play? <laughs> Someone played tackle. What positions did they play? <laughs> Guard and tackle, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, you play tackle. You can move inside the guard. It's, it's, it's not it's, that complicated. It's a different level. It's a little harder to okay, think. Okay, those guys a lot of times. What about Marshall Yonda? What about Don't stop. Don't stop. Well, 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 uh, that has more to do with the fact, too, the length of their arms. Where we look at guys who can play tackle in college because it's a different level when they you get inside. You said they can't harder. do it. You said they can't do it. It's hard to go inside. They went inside. Marshall Yanda was a tackle at, at Iowa and he moved If you're drafting him in the, the first round, league. you're probably anticipating he's going to play tackle right play, away. If you can play guard. It's as simple as this. Pete, will you slide to that inside chair and not no. sit on the yeah. outside no. of the desk? No, why is you that? Won't. You won't do it. Huh? You're but a tackle different on the desk. Different hands. I'll throw tackle. That's why. <laughs> All right, let's get to the Lions at number 29. They could use a corner or a receiver, but at this point in your mock, all the best of are off the board. So you're going to the best safety available instead in Jaden Hicks. Why is he a good fit? I love this kid. I, I think when you watch his tape, he's big, he's strong, he's physical, and he can run. That's the thing. People didn't know how fast he was. He ran 4-4 at his pro day. He can fly. He can play in the deep middle. I think they still have an issue at safety at one spot. They can address that and get themselves. Then they have Branch, who can play the nickel hybrid safety. This kid can play a bunch of different positions. And we know the way the defenses are playing now, Brady. A lot of three safeties on the field at one time. He can do that. I love the way he plays. He's one of my late to the process kind of guys. I liked him when I watched him during uh, the football season and then got back in on him and watched him more and more on tape. I, and then when he ran the 4-4, I really like him. He could be one of those names that ends up going in the first round that not a lot of people are talking about to Pete's point and really to his credit uh, at this point leading up to the draft. Now, the interesting thing I think about this is I did a mock draft for our, our, our CBS Sports HQ uh, social media team. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of flack from the Detroit Lions fan base who told me, we don't need a safety. We don't need to safety in the draft. I'm like, well, for starters, okay, it doesn't matter what you think this team needs. They took a linebacker and they took a running back last year in the first round. So let's pump the brakes for a second. Mm -hmm. They've got Brian Branch to your point. They lost Sutton this offseason. So now you do have a hole where if Branch does move down, especially when more teams more often than not are playing the big nickel sets with three safeties, you then have an open spot. I know Mel and Fallon would have played well last year, but I'd be looking at Hicks or Tyler Newbin, who I said in this particular mock yeah. draft, would also make sense. I think he's another really good safety in this draft class. So this is a need for the Detroit Lions, whether their fans think it or not, and I think it'd be a good pick for them as well. Pete, uh, when looking at this entire first round mock, you had a lot of offensive linemen, 10 go off the board. Eight of them are tackles. FanDuel right now has the over-under offensive linemen set at nine and a half. Why are so many going to be going off the board? There are only so many big men on this planet who can play <laughs> offensive line. If you could grab one, you get one. And by the way, I don't even have the center from Iowa, I mean from uh, Oregon in the first round, and he's, pro he's a chance he can go in the first round as well. So uh, I think you have to draft off offensive lineman when you can this is a good draft for him get him uh, and everybody will address that in this draft you build through the trenches I mean, that's the reality of football it's as simple as that it doesn't always feel as sexy I think for a lot of the fan bases out there when you make that pick for an offensive lineman or even a defensive lineman but this is a very rich class in offensive lineman I think at the top end and I think even in the mid rounds too you might be able to find you know day two starters in the second round as you get on the third round as well it is a very deep class it's a good class and I think th there's a a, there's a hunger for offensive linemen out there. It's hard for these guys to get developed, to become the players that we're accustomed to seeing at the NFL level. So I'm with Pete. I think you're going to see a lot of offensive linemen, a lot of offensive players in general off the board. Yeah, offensive line come at a 
a premium. You see it at the college level, too, with the NIL deals going around now. Uh, but it could be a historical NFL draft for offensive players overall. Do you guys know the most ever offensive players drafted in the first round? Was it 19? Yeah. It was oh, 19. And you had 21 in, in yeah. this one. Yeah. Oh, it's going to break the record. Right. I, I don't think there's any question about that. The record will be broken. And you're not going to see probably a defensive player picked until maybe Atlanta at uh, 8. And, and there's mm. some talk that they might not take one either. Yeah, it could be. I mean, again, I think the other thing is you're looking at the offensive linemen, quarterbacks, wide receivers. You know, three very, very talented classes. And team, Pete, how do you build? How do you build a roster? Th those are three of the positions you always talk about. Right. And then on the defensive side, you have to have the edge rushers and the guys to cover. Well, not that it's a bad class for edge rushers. I think you look at Turner, you look at Chop Robinson, you mentioned Jared Verse. They're a part of that. The quarterbacks. Lots of Lots of as well. Uh, the cornerbacks, I think, play a role in it, but just not quite the amount of talent we're accustomed to seeing. And of course, we don't have a running back in the first mm -hmm. round. No off the ball linebacker in the first okay. round, which no. which may happen. We saw last year, for the, for example, the Lions. But yeah. that's how you build a roster, at least in Pete's mind. That's one of the reasons why you saw it in this mock draft. You, would you take a running back in the first round? Not this year's class. No, no. I wouldn't take him ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned the odds. Uh, odds for offensive players taken in the first round: twenty-one and a half. So you barely got the under there. Wow. But speaking of odds, let's take a look at the odds for number one overall pick. The market believes that it'll be Caleb Williams overall at minus 20,000. But Pete, if you're right about Jaden Daniels, no. it's a nice payday here. 75 no. to 1. No, you I'm not. Pete, put some money on it, Pete. I think Pete is named GM of the Bears in the next two days. <laughs> then, then it would be J then it would be Jaden Daniels, and you could cash that ticket, but it's not going to happen. I put Caleb your money Williams where your mouth is. is. A Caleb Williams is a lock to go number one. Put some money on it, Pete. No. Why? It's a lock. Why wouldn't you? This is who Just they the should fun. draft, not what the morons will do.